Okay, dear students, welcome here. So now it's time to talk about BLAST, uh, which is the basic local alignment search tool. It's one of the most used tools in bioinformatics. And I will have this lecture divided into two parts. The first part is a bit of like how to use it, a bit more background. And then we go through a bit about the algorithm, including the statistics that are used there. And it's very related to the last lecture by Petras. So to start here, we will go to a bit of overview. So it's the first version was developed in 1990 and later, later in 95. And it was basically the first method that was fast enough to search databases uh, on a local machine. So you, before that, you, you are fast and accurate enough to provide good statistics and search databases. So it has been used for basically anything when you want to find from all you could leave between proteins between genes. So the version we're going to use mainly is the one that's on NCBI website. There's a link over there. And I am sure the, uh, the algorithm itself is not so well described in the book. Or, and I will just follow the book, so it will not be that detailed. So if you want to have a better explanation, you can, for instance, go to either the Wikipedia page or go to this uh, uh, YouTube video that I have a link to here in the bottom corner. Uh, so, when you run BLAST, you need to do four things. You need to specify the sequence you want to start with. And it can be a DNA sequence or a protein sequence. You do need to find the type of BLAST you're going to run. You need to find the database you're going to search. And then there's a set of additional parameters you need to run. So I will go through all of these choices here. First, you need to specify a sequence or, or protein DNA. And then you have to choose the type of BLAST you want to run. And one of the nice things with BLAST is that you can run many different versions of it. You can run BLAST P, that take a query of a protein, search a database of proteins. You can do, so that's quite straightforward. You can do the same thing with nucleotides, take a query of a nucleotide, and run against the database of nucleotides. But you can also do BLAST X, which means you input the DNA sequence, and you actually make six frames translation response in both directions. And then you start the protein database. Or the other way, the way, the way, other way around, you take protein and you search six frames of DNA databases. So you can you don't have to uh, translate that manually outside. It can be done in the program by using this blast X blast N. And you can even do DNA, DNA searching, but in the protein space using T blast X, which is um, of course much more computationally expensive because you need to do six times six comparisons. But the advantage of doing that compared to using just the BLAST N is that protein searches are much more sensitive than DNA searches or RNA searches. So this is, yeah, once you decided what to run, you have to go ahead and decide what you're going to run against. And well, as I said, you have six frames translations. You can basically take that and you can generate from a gene, you can get six possible protein sequences. As you already know. So if you have the protein database, you can search anything from NR, which is in this book, it was 65 million sequences. Today it's a few hundred million sequences. You can all take all the proteins that are references, that's all the, 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 that are codes running for that. Uh, and you can search about PDB, or you can search about uh, SwissProt, which is much more reduced database. And you can also search about metagenomic databases, which are uh, many, many orders of magnitude bigger. This is a very small one here. This is, nowadays, these databases are much, much bigger than the center here. Uh, so this is if you do a protein search, and you may see that they are. I mean, nowadays, of course, if you search NR, you get sometimes thousands or hundreds of thousands of hits. So sometimes it's actually you don't really care. So then you search, uh, you want, just want to search the Swiss pot or something like that instead. And the DNA, you have the same thing. You can do a search maybe. Maybe you know which species you want to search about. So you only search about human genome, or you search about uh, the uh, uh, mouse or whatever. Or, but you can also search for all NR, all genes, all uh, NCBI genomes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Search. And of course, there's a large set of metagenomic databases. And of course, the bigger database you have, the more hits you're going to have, have. But there's also more hits, false positives you're going to get. 
So the, then you have, once you know this, you have a lot of other parameters you can choose from. Of course, the default one is one thing, but in uh, some cases, it's uh, uh, it's worth looking to the other options also. But in particular, things like uh, my, there are something with outputs, like how many outputs are going to be input. You want to have a maximum number. You don't want to print 100 million sequences or 100,000 sequences. Yes. Uh, and you could, sometimes you have some special things if you, you query very short. You have uh, a threshold you want to show. You have an E value, which we will talk about later. So if the E values, you only want to show hits that have a lower E value than a cutoff. And uh, then we have a word size, which I will discuss later. Uh, and uh, and you have the number of max hits you have in the range. Of the you can choose your substitution matrix, as, as discussed in the last lecture. And uh, also what gap extends to cost and things that you have. You cannot use anything you want because parameters that are used for calculate e-values and, and, and the scores are dependent on the gap extension cost, but they are set to normal as you choose from. And you can have some computational adjustment biases. You can uh, look, filter away low complexity regions, like things that are very repeated, you can filter them away. And you can do masks and you can mask lowercase, uh, and there are some other things you can do also. Okay, so in some cases, most cases, if you have a very strong hit, it doesn't really matter what you do, you get a good hit anyway. But there are cases like here, you where you're gonna search for, uh, you're searching for, uh, I guess, insulin, and you can find an insulin peptide in the software Melanogaster. If you use the uh, default method, you have an E value of 0 0.05, which is not really significant. It means that at least one in 200 channels get a false positive. Uh, but if you changed it to running, uh, if you filter away low complexity regions, this you can see that um, the uh, first you actually get a slightly higher score, but you also have an E value that is much stronger, more significant. And if you even do um, even including computational bias, bias based statistics, you get an even lower E value. So that using these extra filters actually can pick up hits that you would miss otherwise. So. Here is the parameters you want to use, I mean, the matrix, so the value cutoffs, and the thresholds are often the ones you use there. And you get a hit of how big database. So this is the output you get. And then have this, here you have also this column altruistic statistics, which is actually the values that we use later. Here is lambda and k are fact, not, parameters that we, that we use, but not in other shape. They are already calculated, so you can just use whatever they are. But it depends on the choices you make in other cases. And then you get an output that often looks something like this, quite easy to understand. You have a, here you have a quite good score, which is green in this case, it was even stronger with red, that covers basically the whole sequence. You see that there are some of these hits are missing a few uh, C terminal residues. And then you have some weaker hits that are blow, and then black ones that are maybe not so strong hits that are just covering parts of the sequences. And you can also have a hit output that says this is a part of a globin, it belongs to the globin's like superfamily. And if you run on the, on the computer, you get an output that looks like that. See, this is an almost perfect match of DNA here, which, which then is searched with three nucleotides here in the beginning. For your first one, so you see, which, which sort of makes sense. And you, and you have an arrow or lines matching the identity. But you see, it's not identical, but they are something like 78% identity on DNA level, which is quite high. <laughs> okay, now to the algorithm. So the whole idea of BLAST is to be as sensitive as Smith Waterman alignment, so you do a local alignment, but uh, much faster. And the trick here is basically you want to filter away and not spend your time searching regions that are not giving good scores. So, and you can do that by using hash tables. You only look, first identify the regions that might contain good scores. And you do this by using uh, matches doesn't have to be identical matches, but it has to be high scoring matches. So they call it uh, high scoring pairs. Uh, and in this case, for proteins, you use, in this case, the default, I guess, is three, and you have a threshold T. So, so you have a word of three, and you have the substitution matrix that add up to 12 in this case. So basically, if you have, if you have three additions in, in the Boston matrix, that all add up to three. So if you start with the sequence L, the leucine, tryptophan, glycine, and then itself, you see leucine gives four, leucine, 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 leucine gives four, tryptophan, tryptophan gives four, it gives 11, and glycine, glycine gives six. 
So you can say that uh, L, L, yeah, G is 21 scores. But you also have other versions, particularly if the tryptophan is involved here, that also gives high scores. So many residues that are based, even things that are phenylalanine, they basically have a series of distortion value to leucine uh, together with the tryptophan and the glycine gives a score of 17. You can also think about if you had, for instance, leucine, 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 you, there would only be that one that gives a score of 12 or higher, because leucine is, leucine, leucine is three times four is 12. So there are some substitutions that are not, because they are not, they're quite likely, so they're not going to have, they're not going to give very high scores. But you find your, all, you identify all these scores, all these matches in the whole database that has a score over this cutoff, this threshold. And you, you remember localization of these ones, and if they are on the same diagonal, so they have, uh, if they're found in the same diagonal, here in this in your sequence alignment, you can add them together. So the next step is to take a score and then extend it. So here you have your LWG and AW here. You see, ah, next positions are KK. So that, 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 that can make it bigger. The other direction is AA. So I can extend it until my score becomes lower than another cutoff. So basically you just walk here. You do a basically no gap alignment. Well, in this case, it was a gap here, but here, you can see the whole area here you can extend without any gaps, because there are no gaps. So yeah, that's the second step, you basically extend it, and you have another threshold that you can say, okay, I'm gonna only keep the, the top ones here. And once so that's what I do here, so basically I have, here is another example, P, Q, G, and I have, say, so it's much P, G, and I add it, but then when I get the F, V, I stop here, because it doesn't extend the score anymore. So it's just basically the same as you do in local alignment, but I ignore the gaps at the moment. And then the third one, I basically do a calculator, I basically do a, Nowadays, you do a, do your full speed water alignment only on the local region where you have hats. And then you compare the statistics. So, so basically, that's a normal Smith Waterman algorithm, but not on the whole database, but that's in the region where you have matches. Yeah. And then you report every match, which then you can get an E value, which will come to, and you report it. So, of course, the, here's some different tells me the story you have. You can see here the number of hits you have if you have for this So if you have, see if you have hits of seven, eight, nine, you have hundreds of millions of hits. But if you hit the 12, 13, it goes down quite a lot. So you really have many, many fewer hits. And I mean, you can zoom in here. So, and uh, then the, the extensions are even fewer if you have lower cutoffs. So like you see that you can reduce database search space a lot by having a, a more strict threshold. But of course, there is, there is a theoretical reason you might miss something if the threshold is too high. So the default capsules are pretty good and they optimize for that. But it makes the search basically linear in time instead of, instead of quadratic in time. Okay, so next step is e-values. Uh, so e-value or the p-value, the p-value is the probability of finding a false hit given a certain score. So basically what you want to do is say, is this hit I have, is this, um, can this, how likely it is that this has occurred by chance? If I take two unrelated sequences, how likely it is that I get a hit like that? And if it's very likely, of course, then it's quite likely that this is not a correct hit. It doesn't mean it's not likely not to be corrected. So, but, but if you take, um, uh, so, so the, P, the P value first, P value the first, you can probably do that. And the E value is expected, the number of uh, expected hits with, with this score higher. And as you can, can, can understand, of course, it depends on the size of the database. If you have twice as big database, you're expected to get twice as many hits. If your sequence is longer, because you do a local search, if your sequence is twice as long, you also expect to get twice as many hits given the same score. So, so you can understand that the, the, this, this E value depends on the score. Uh, and this, you can theoretically show that for non-gap alignment, you can have a perfect statistical distribution of these e-values, and they follow what is called e extreme value distribution, which I guess is here, which is basically a Gaussian distribution that is shifted towards the high scores. Um, and uh, from this e-value e distribution, you can uh, get, um, Oh, uh, well, you can then calculate how likely it is that you have this by chance, and if the likelihood is very low, it's very likely to be corrected. So basically, from BLAST, you get 
you turn your scores, you start with the raw score, which is basically the Smith Wortman score. These are calculated from the substitution matrix and gap penalties. For this, you calculate the bit score, which is basically normalized raw score. It basically takes the uh, takes the raw score, multiplied by a factor, and subtract uh, another factor, or logarithm another factor, and divided by logarithm two. And then from this, you can calculate the E value given the size of the sequence and the size of the database. So the E is just the size of the length of the sequence times the length of the database times two to the minus power of the bit score. The advantage of a bit score is that it's uh, actually has can you can you can use different uh, substitution matrix, different penalties, and they're comparable. A raw score is just a raw number; it doesn't really mean anything. You can multiply by hundred, and you get hundred of bigger numbers. But you have to have it doesn't mean anything that is uh, without comparison to something else. So the bit score is actually something comparable. So higher bit score is always better, but the higher raw score can just be that your substitution matrix has, has high high numbers in it. And the E value tells you how likely it is, how, how many expected hits will you have from a random database at this score. So this is this. So basically, yeah, I'm repeating this formula again. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, and then you have uh, E values here, and then you can use the, the P values, which is the probability of having one or more false hits. And if these numbers are small, they're basically the same. But of course, when they get close to one, they're not the same. But E values is often what is used, and not P values. Uh, okay, so now we can go on here, and you can think about how, how you use this funny again. So you can start to put in sequence, you use the T plus then, you start the DNA database, you look at output, you find the masses of DNA including no, known proteins, not novel, and uh, including pro related proteins, novel, and it has a false positive. And then you can, of course, take this again and search your. DNA you put in this base confirm you have done that. And uh, yeah, said already, if you want to understand the algorithm better, look at the explanation on this URL. Thank you for listening. And that's all for today.